Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name's Adam. You're with me at my shop, Kaputi Inc. Today we're going to finish up the wiring in this video on my gooseneck trailer. We're going to put new LED lights everywhere. We're going to put a chain and binder rack on it. I've ordered a longer one online and I realize now that I'm just going to end up cutting it down into two smaller ones and we'll mount that to the sides of the trailer so that you have chains and binders on each side. We're going to add a large work light. I've got an oversized light that uh, would go on the top of a windshield and uh, if I can make that work I think I'll put that up there otherwise we'll get our hands on some smaller ones. We also are going to do some repairs to the ramps. Uh, one of the ramps needs a piece of metal taken off it. The guy who I bought the trailer from uh, had welded it on there and it's just excessive. It makes the ramp too heavy, the spring assist doesn't really work as well as it should and I don't need that. I'm not going to be hauling hay on here. It's just equipment trailer so uh, first things first let's plasma cut some holes in the side of the trailer and get these lights light holes to the right size Here's the products we're going to use on the trailer. This is a, an, an oval strobe light. It comes as a kit, all as this. I buy it on eBay, buy like 10 at a crack, whatever. Um, comes with the light, the grommet, and the pigtail ready to go. Uh, I've used those, no issues with those. I've had them on some of my other trailers for a couple of years now. I use them on my dump truck, uh, my big trailer, I my excavator on, things of that nature. These are uh, two and a half inch LED round lights uh, they come grommet pigtail you can order them that way I think you can get just the lights too um, I've ordered that just to have extra in stock LED license plate light I picked up at Fleet Farm today uh, we also have a four inch LED light uh, this came as a whole kit as well light grommet pigtail um, in the future I'll die just the light just to have in stock this is my junction box. These are plastic. Uh, this is what it looks like closed. This is what it looks like open. You've got your studs in there, all different colors. Comes with accessories, your screws, other grommets. Grommets with holes in them already. Otherwise, they come, they come blank. So you can cut into them. What I do a lot of times is I'm just putting an X in there with a knife to slide it through. That seems to work pretty well. Uh, here's our wiring. It's all that Phillips Superflex, super nice stuff. Uh, it's pretty spendy, but it's worth it. Uh, you only have to wire something once, is, and you're done. Uh, we got two wire, four wire, and of course uh, the main trailer seven wire here. Here we have our box of electrical connectors. Uh, we've got our yellow, blue, red shrink connectors. Those are probably some of the most used stuff. We do have some ringlets here different sizes those all have heat shrink connector built onto them 
uh, male and female spade connectors. These are just non shrink wrap butt connectors. Those don't get used very often. And the devil here, the scotch locks. I don't know why I keep those. I don't ever dig in there, but uh, got some bigger stuff for making battery cables. I have a battery cable tool that's pretty slick. It's a little handheld hydraulic power deal. Uh, Lifesaver a lot of times if you're in a pinch for a battery cable, you don't have to run to the local parts outlet. These little picadillos here I picked up on, on the old eBay there. Uh, this plugs into your fuse box. As long as you have room, sometimes that becomes an issue. Uh, but they typically will slide over the next fuse, so that's not an issue. They sit out far enough. You put your two fuses in here, and they actually operate separate of each other. You can blow one and still have the other one work. Um, like, let's say this is your windshield wiper motor. You know, to begin with, the original fuse, you just put that fuse right here. Then you add your second fuse for your other circuit. And you could blow the windshield wiper motor, and this, your CB will still work, whatever you add on here, or vice versa. Um, I've got it in normal fuse size and in mini fuse. Um, so yeah, that's my electrical box there. Here's the pipe I picked up at the local depot for home improvements. Uh, I got three 10 foot sticks, uh, three quarter inch. That's big enough to uh, fit the wire in there comfortably, slide in and out. And you don't have to worry about, is it gonna get caught up while you're trying to feed wire in it? Here's the box I picked up online, some sort of trailer supply store I found just uh, late night Googling as usual. Uh, this is just a square box, nothing special to it. Uh, I really wish they'd drill holes in the bottom of these. I end up doing that because otherwise they sit full of water because they do a pretty great job of bending metal and stitching up the seams. So I'm gonna have to slice that sucker down the middle, add a piece to each side, and this same deal. Uh, I bought it expecting to use it as a whole piece, but I think what I'm gonna end up doing is just slicing this sucker down the middle too and use it as two individual pieces. But even as a whole piece, I've got it on a different trailer. I just love it. Uh, they hook in here. Everything stays nice and organized. You can cover it, put a lock in there. In case you're in an unsavory area, you find yourself maybe at a late night gentleman's club and you're concerned other patrons might be trying to steal your trailer accessories. So that uh, gives you a little peace of mind while you're looking at a little piece of tail. Anyways, I digress. Uh, after we slice that sucker in half, I think what we're going to do is mount it on the rail here, uh, probably almost as high as it'll go, and then we'll put the box here, and we'll bolt it on um, so that there's enough, um, you're able to take this cover back off so that you can service the jack if you need to. That should give us enough room to hang a couple of binders and a couple of chains for each side. And we're going to do the same as we cross over to the other side there. You can get a kind of zoomed out view. We'll put the chain rack up here with the box underneath it. So let's get started. Alright, so I've squeezed my fat ass up under this trailer. Now we're going to add some conduit right along the rail, the bottom of the rail here. This is where the old one ran. We're going to put a new one in, a little, like I said, a little bit bigger. Uh, pretend it's like uh, dating in your late 20s, you know, after you've lived your full life, you know, you lived your life to the fullest. Uh, you know, it's going to be loose the way the wire fits inside that pipe, but it'll make it nice for sliding around. You know, it'll get the job done, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw some sloppy welds on this thing. Don't expect too much. Kinda like my wife, bless her heart. Let's get to it. Yeah, 
that should hold enough to hold the pipe in place. And we'll come over here and we'll uh, to the other side reposition my extra fancy snap-on light given to me by my good friend Tone. He'll be the other gentleman in the video. So uh, lay some more. Let's burn some hole in our pants. Here we go. Mission accomplished. We both welded the pipe and burned a hole in my pants. Win USA. I could build this whole thing That, folks, is what proper wiring should look like. Heat shrink over heat shrink, butt connectors, everything nicely put together. Now we're feeding all the wire from the front of the trailer to the back through the conduit we put in there. Uh, it's a lot easier to do now that it's not a finger in an ass anymore and more like a hot dog down a hallway. So uh, let's get it started. Thank you. 
Okay. All right, guys, let's follow the main wire. It goes along through this conduit. You can see it peak out there and it jumps into another conduit here down the inside of the rail and then it peeks through a hole there. It's a little dark lighting and then it gets inside to the frame rail and we'll back up. Come over here. It goes down the inside of this frame rail in some conduit that we welded on there. You guys were here for that. We're going to come all the way here in between the duels. On the inside of the duels here, on the other side, it's right about here, there's a junction box mounted. So from there, we take another wire and it's going to come out and it comes back here and it does to all that beautiful wiring Tony did on the back here. It even catches these two side marker lights. Then when we come back to the junction box, that's, that's everything uh, from the beaver tail back. From the junction box here, then it comes out to right here where there's a strobe light and there's a connection here. We have a two wire that goes back to that light and then we have a four wire from here that runs forward down to the side of the trailer. I was going to blast some holes on the uh, inside, under inside of these frame rails, but it ended up being that right here, the, the cross beams, the way they weld in, they are actually like a four inch beam and this is a six or four and a five, whatever it is, I didn't measure, but there's actually a little gap right here on top underneath that's perfect for the wire to run. Uh, so it lays on top of there really nice and secure. That four wire runs forward. We tap into it here to, for a marker light and then we tap into it again here for the beacon. This is actually a four wire terminates here and it turns back into a two wire again and then it comes up into these two clearance lights. So there's normally when this uh, trailer was made there was a split in the main harness here and a split in the main harness here and another one here and another one here. So there was, well, let's see here, six splits in the main harness before it got to the back of the trailer. Our main harness doesn't get exposed. It's in jacketed wire all the way back to the junction box. That's where its first split happens. We don't have any splits that are exposed to the weather. Everything happens in a junction box. So that's how we got everything wired in here. All right, guys, that's going to do it for wiring on our gooseneck trailer project. Uh, only thing left I got to do is put some strobe lights in it when they show up. Everything's wired there. Uh, the grommets and the strobes will be showing up hopefully this week. Uh, kind of a VIP member on eBay, if you know what I mean. They do deliver stuff right to my house. <laughs> Anyways, uh, there'll be one more video on this whole deal, all the accessories I add to it. I added the large light bar, uh, chain and binder rack, which we're going to modify. Uh, the ramps and the new springs we're going to put on the ramps. Uh, other than that, this puppy's ready to go, ready to haul the skid loader. So uh, thanks for watching. Please like the video and don't forget to subscribe. Check us out on Facebook, uh, Kaputi Inc. So have a good one.